Okay, now let's talk about the software, the, specifically the post-processing procedure after you finish your scan. So let's scan this whale first. Let's, I uh, think, two or three. Let's check the settings. All right, okay, let's do it. Okay, that's about right. And note that normally I recommend you only to do scan one rotation for a specific area. Because if you scan it uh, like an area for twice, I mean two rotation, it might will create overlap. Well, you can fix that in the post-processing procedure, but let's not talk about that yet. Because I want you to show you this first. Now, if you are new to this, the Rebel Scan and the Range 2 Scanner, you might want to try this function. This is called, it's called one-click editing. And this is quite a no-brainer. What you need to do is only click this button, apply, and wait for the software to deliver you the final 3D model. You don't have to do anything. Okay, looks good, right? All the details, no problem. So that's how you can use the one-click editing. It always delivers you a pretty good 3D model. But let's talk about the manual processing. Actually, you can do it and you can do the po post processing step by step. And here is the one thing I would like to point out is now we have finished all the procedures all the way to the mesh. But you can always go back to any step you would like to redo. Look, now if I we choose fuse, it'll tell you, do you want to overwrite the process, right? So you can do it once again with the different settings. So let's let's talk about the fusion first. So now as you can see, there are two methods you can choose. One is advanced, one is standard. So advanced will deliver is is smarter. It's like uh it knows that somewhere the point cloud is thicker and somewhere is thinner. So it'll know when to shave off some points. And the standard is just what it is in the in the original way. And here, the point, point distance, the lower this number is, it'll end up with a much bigger file and a longer post-processing time when you are doing uh, the, the, fuse, the fusing. Okay, but let's try it and see how it goes. And of course, it delivers you a very big file size that you might don't want. That's because, let's see. Okay, that's about 30 seconds, right? And look, even though I'm using a, a gaming laptop, it's an i9 CPU and a GTX 3060 graphic card, but still, look, when I'm trying to rotate it, it feels a bit laggy, right? And look, the points is already more than 1 million. So if you have a very good device, so you might, can, you might want to try to do it, but if you have a uh, just a normal laptop, you might want to increase this number. And uh, on the other hand, if you maximize it to like two millimeters, you'll have a very small file size and much quicker processing time. So let's just use, uh, well, let's use 50 for our, for our example here. Okay, the points are much less. And look, now there's no problem to rotate it, right? Okay, now let's go to the sub functions here. So first one is called isolation. So you can choose a rate and the lower this rate is, the smaller this function will detect the smaller part as isolated that is not connected to the main 3D model. And the bigger this number is, it'll create a much bigger isolated part, which is you might don't want to do it because under 100%, everything will be considered as isolation, which is not good. Okay, so let's detect. And look, those red area, those red dots are all isolated part, which is the noise on the surface. So we can choose apply to delete them. Okay, done. And the second one, overlap detection. And I, I'd recommend you use the the, the preset, this recommended default number, and detect. 
and the, and this function will detect auto detect the overlaps that some like some area you might scan in more than one rotation that will create a thicker point compared to other areas. Look now, oh look, almost everywhere there has uh, some overlap here, so we can choose apply and delete them, so we will have a much cleaner 3D model. Okay, and smooth, and this function will smooth up your 3D model. And note that you might don't want to crank this strength, crank this number too much, because if you're scanning something like a surface, flat surface, like a table, you might want to do it because there's no detail on it. But if you're scanning something with a lot of details, like this wavy area and the belly, look, there are small lines here. And you might don't want to increase this number a lot because it'll cause you to lose detail. And times is how many times you want this process to repeat. So let's you just use preset number here, default 10 and 10. And I think, uh, well, visually I cannot tell any difference, but if you feel not okay, you can choose to do it more once again. Okay, and simplify. There are two downsampling type, you can choose uniform and geometric. And the ratio, still, I don't recommend you to do crank this ratio a lot because it'll cause you to lose detail. So 40% is good. So this will simplify your 3D model, make your process, future process more smooth and more quickly. Okay, looking good. Let's go to the mesh function. Okay, now meshing. So first you can choose this quality. The bigger this number is will end up the better quality, but of course, the longer processing time and bigger file size. And on the other hand, the smaller this number is will end up in the lower quality, but much smaller file size and much quicker post-processing time. So in this case, I think let's use five or 5.1, okay, that's fine. And again, we'll ask, do I want to overwrite it? Because we have already done that few, uh, meshing in uh, one-click editing. Okay, done. And as you can see, there are some holes here. There is a function, there is an option for you to choose hole filling auto. You can choose to enable it when doing the meshing, but I recommend you to do the fill function manually because look, here's a fill hole function here. First, let's take a look at this isolation. This is just as the same as in the fusion here. So let's not talk about it a lot. Let's talk about the fill, fill hole function here. Now, as you can see, the, there are two methods you can choose from. One is plain and the other is curved. Why I don't recommend you to do that in the use this auto? Because auto will only do the fill holes in the curved mode. And as a result, look, here, as a look at this space, you, you might don't want to this space being filled as a curved plane sur uh, curved surface. You want it to be plain, right? Because if you want to 3D print it, you want it to stand on the surface. So it's good to have it filled as plain. So let's choose curved first. And there are some, uh, look, oh, that's uh, quite a lot of holes. So you can click every hole here but it's kind of uh, annoying, right? But you can also use this selection tool to include all of the holes here. Also this lasso, you can draw a circle to include all of them here. But look, I don't want the base to be filled as curved. So let's fill all of the holes except the base. Okay, looking good, mm, no problem. And let's choose plain and detect again. And let's select this to be filled with a plain surface. Mm. Okay, looking good. Right? Yeah. And smooth, just uh, as the same with the smooth function in the fusion, and also the simplify is the same with the uh, with the fusion. You can just do it again in a in a meshing area uh, stage. And texture. Look, uh, I, I cannot select texture. This is because I didn't scan this well in the full color mode. If you scan something in the full color mode, you can do this texture. But if you were scanning something in a full color mode and choose one click editing, it would also do the texture mapping for you. And there's nothing to talk about in the texture mapping, just one button, apply it, and it will do the uh, texture mapping automatically for you. So let's not talk about that. Okay, merge, we'll talk about that in the following videos. Please go to check the, the following videos about how to merge two scans in one complete scan. 
So let's not talk about that here. And export, you can choose to export uh, all models, point clouds, or the meshed model here. So let's choose mesh model. And as you can see, there are three formats you can choose from. And for the non-color mode, I recommend you to choose this STL because that's compatible with most 3D models, uh, 3D softwares. And if you are using the texture, the, the colored mode, you can choose POY and OBJ. So just based on what you need and just pick a file, a folder and choose save. Oh, I'm not gonna save it here because I don't need it. 